Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, your next comic coming to the stage, I, I, I know him because he usually sits right there and he stares at me lovingly uh, while I do my set, but apparently he was just stealing my jokes, so that's fine. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Are you ready, Miss Choke? Are you ready? You ready for this? You ready? Okay, you're tough, I can tell. You can take a, take a, okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Cribb! Boom. Dave's a germaphobe, everybody. I'm taking care of him. My girlfriend insisted on that, by the way. Yeah, she's in the house. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Thanks for coming. I mean, it really is a special night for me, so I appreciate all of you coming. Um, I'm going to drink with you guys tonight, if that's okay. Thank you. And I'm going to Uber later. I do a lot of Ubering. Uh, when I've been drinking, and I don't know about you guys, but they say it's the right thing to do, but I'm not convinced, but I think it, I feel like it just pisses off my passengers, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so there's that, and maybe I'll switch to the night shift. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, actually, all seriousness, I wanted to open up with a joke, but uh, tonight really is special. For, um, let me ask you this, make some noise if you came to see me tonight. Thank you, thank you. That's what I was hoping for because I saved something I've been working on for a while. The, the, the comedians don't know this, the owner of the club doesn't know this, but I have a really big announcement tonight that I just could barely keep to myself. There's a couple people in the crowd that know about it, but three weeks ago today, I signed a deal to do a Netflix special. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, yeah. It's, it's a game changer. 17 bucks a month, and I can watch anything I want. <laughs> so, so, I will tell you, my life has changed a lot. Those of you who know me, my life has changed a lot in the last year or so. And um, <laughs> I, uh, I have a new girlfriend. I got recently, I say recently, a little over a year ago, I got a divorce, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But... I have a new girlfriend, and some of you know this about me, but many of you don't, but Lori is here tonight, and she's actually the first, this is the first time I've ever said this out loud, I think, she's the first white woman that I've ever been with. <laughs> I'm not kidding, I mean, it's just traditionally I've been very drawn to very dark skin, and you know, to be fully transparent, I like kind of, you know, round butts and accentuated body parts, so up until now, I've only ever been with black men. <laughs> we'll see you after the show, sir. <laughs> no, so, uh, no, here's the thing, though. When you're married, I was married for 15 years, right? And you have to make, a, there's a lot of adjustments that you just, you don't even, you take for granted, right? Like, I used to have the neighborhood kids over for hours to play games. Now if I have the neighborhood kids over for hours, I've got some pretty pissed off parents. I I'm not kidding. They will come right up and knock on the door of your van. <laughs> you know, when I tell that joke out loud, <laughs> it reminds me of that old 80s song. Little titties in the back of my van. <laughs> Two American kids doing the best thing. <laughs> That's just wrong. But if you're laughing at that, you gave me permission for another joke. But I uh, just want you to know that subconsciously. No, seriously, though, when I got divorced, I met Lori over here, right over here at Jimmy B's uh, Beach Bar, which is really cool. But I kind of came over here. It was therapeutic to come over to the beach. And, you know, the first thing I noticed, man, there, were, there was ass everywhere. <laughs> And apparently the bottoms have gotten smaller and smaller. <laughs> and sometimes I just stand back in awe and I think, you know, like, how do men become so comfortable in their own skin? I just, I, <laughs> I'm just not that confident, right? It's crazy. It's crazy what you see there. No, but uh, things do change. I'm going to be 54 next month. 54. It's crazy. And, uh, 
I have my, uh, things change when you get that age. I mean, your, your body starts, you get aching and things like that. So I've been putting off, I've had a lot of back pain for the last couple of years and I've been putting off this surgery. Finally, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the doc and he's like, you know what? You, you can't put this, this date. If you want to feel better, you're gonna have to get this penis reduction. <laughs> So, all right, so, by the way, there's a lot of people that are learning a lot about me tonight <laughs> that they didn't know. So, um, I want to share one more thing, you know, I'm, I'm, this is more of a vent as I, as I kind of exit the stage here for a moment, but it's more of a venting, you know, I don't know about you guys, but as you get older, I don't know if you get more cynical, I don't know what the deal is, but I, I've had it with the media, how about you guys? Have you guys had it with the media? <laughs> You know, I watch the news and I've almost had to stop. It's not because it's bad news. It's just because everything you see is all one-sided. It just depends on what channel you're watching as to what part of the story you get. Right. So I'm, I'm listening to this story the other day. And it, it, don't get me wrong, it's a tragic, tragic story, right? Um, young guy winds up shaking his girlfriend's baby to death, seven-month-old baby. It's an awful story. But I watched the whole story all the way through from beginning to end. And not one time did they say what that baby had done. <laughs> They never said it. They never said it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> that guy's never going to get a fair shake, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Now, I will say this. That's a terrible, ter that's a disturbing joke at, at best. Um, but I will say this, that the comedic mind, the comedic mind, right, keeps going on that joke, by the way. Yeah. Keeps going. Yeah. Have, you, have you guys ever, you guys remember the old commercial, how many licks does it take to get to a center of a tizzy oh, pop? Yeah. I, I just couldn't, yeah. I, I just couldn't help but think, like, how many shakes? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's my time. I'm gonna end on one, just one more thing. Um, I want to leave this with you guys, and hopefully it'll inspire you. It's uh, this quote. I live by this quote. It's by one of my very close people named Dave Cribbs, who's an Amazon best-selling author. But the quote is, the truth is, tonight, 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 was the very first time I stepped on stage to do comedy. And, and the, quote, the, quote, the quote is, they can only say you can't until you do. Good night. Virginia? What is happening? I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone. Is he an author or something? What the fuck does he do? What does he do? Car parts? Right, all right. He, he, he's a realtor.